Hello everyone and welcome to this month's webinar, Essential Oils and Aromatherapy, What Sets Now Apart in the Industry? My name is Susan Velakis and I will be your host for today. The presentation is approximately 45 minutes long, so we've already received some questions prior to the webinar which we will be answering following the presentation. However, if you have questions that are not answered, please feel free to use the chat bubble on your screen and send them to me and we will be sure to answer you promptly by email. Today's presentation is jam-packed with information about now essential oils, our testing procedures, and our newest essential oil offerings. Now is the number one overall brand in the essential oil category according to SPINS data 2019. So I'm sure you'll enjoy this presentation to help you better understand just what sets us apart in the industry. Our presenters today, Tina Tews and Lou Demiers, are both part of our NOW family, so let me begin by introducing them to you. Tina Tews is a licensed esthetician in Illinois with 10 years experience and is currently working toward her aromatherapy certification. She began her career with NOW as a part-time consultant while working in the skincare and financial industries. She joined the NOW International Department full-time in 2015 to help expand the personal care line in the international market, and shortly thereafter took on the role as personal care brand manager for our NOW Solutions and Essential Oils line of products. Lou Demiers is a research and development chemist at NOW Foods. He received his BS degree in chemistry and mathematics and his MS degree in organic chemistry. He has over 50 years of experience in exploratory organic synthesis, fats and oils, flavor chemistry, and essential oils. And he spent the last 20 years with the Now Foods Quality Assurance and Research and Development teams. He's currently responsible for the quality of the Now brand of essential oils and essential oil blends. So with that, it is my pleasure to welcome Tina and Lou to today's presentation. Thank you, Sue. Hi everyone, Tina here. Welcome to this month's webinar. Today we will, we will be going over aromatherapy and essential oils and how NOW's commitment to quality and purity set us apart as an industry leader. NOW has been family owned and operated since 1968. Our mission as a company is to provide value in products and services that empower people to lead healthier lives. This pertains to every brand under the NOW umbrella, including aromatherapy. For those of you who have seen our essential oils or carrier oils with a partial French label, that is also due to us owning and operating a facility in Canada as well. Our domestic facilities are located in both Bloomingdale and Sparks. Where we have state-of-the-art labs and the latest analytical instrumentation for review of our ingredients and final products. We will discuss this more in the slides ahead. As a company, our main focus is on quality but we also take a lot of pride in still being family owned and operated. As a natural products company, we are also aware of our potential impact on the environment and are committed to reducing our carbon footprint and focusing on continued sustainability of sourcing ingredients and packaging. We are committed to sharing our blessings and good fortune with others as well. And we give to many local, international and environmental based charities. So we'll start off the presentation with the definition of essential oils in aromatherapy. Essential oils are aromatic volatile substances found within a plant and extracted from the parts such as the flower, leaf, resin, bark, root, branch, seed, or fruit. Within these oils, hundreds of organic constituents promote beneficial responses when applied or inhaled. Aromatherapy and essential oils have been used throughout the ages and were considered one of the few classes of medicines known until the late 19th century. Aromatherapy is a gentle, non-invasive, natural healing art that utilizes the sense of essential oils to promote general well-being. In this photo, we show the physical mechanics of aromatherapy. Our sense of smell immediately engages emotional and psychological processes. The actual aroma of a scent is picked up by the olfactory nerve located in the back of the nose. The olfactory system is a mechanism of smell and its nerve fibers run directly to the brain and limbic system which links directly to our memories, stored learned responses, emotions, and feelings. The process by which aroma or plant essence is removed is called an extraction. As far as extraction methods go, most oils we carry are either steam distilled or cold press, which is also known as expression. Steam distillation is the most common method for plants, flowers, and bark. 
In regards to cold pressing, this is also mainly used on citrus oils. It involves applying a cold press, which is a t type of dowel rod with spikes to extract the highest concentration of beneficial oils from the fruit's skin. Due to the relatively large quantities of oil in citrus peel and the low cost to grow and harvest, citrus oils tend to be the least expensive compared to the other oils. Another method that's used is solvent extraction. This is used when the properties of a delicate flower and plant material would be otherwise altered or destroyed by steam distillation or with botanicals that contain very little oil and are too delicate or costly for distillation. Um, oils like this would be jasmine absolute and rose absolute. An example, um, rose takes over 1,000 pounds of rose petals to get one ounce of rose essential oil. So we have an absolute, which is a blend, and this costs a fraction of what pure rose would cost, which brings value at a price point. We have vanilla oil that is CO2 extracted. This is a modern technique used to remove the oils from the plant matter without using heat or leaving behind any solvent residue. So for any of our essential oils, you can check the side panel of each bottle for the extraction method of each oil. This is the steam distillation process I was discussing earlier. This is using large metal retorts. The plant materials are placed on a grid with water underneath. When the water boils, it produces a steam, which then flows through the plant material, releasing the essential oil volatiles. The essential oil volatiles are then converted into vapor and passed through a condenser and into a liquid form. The essential oil is then separated from the condensed water, which, was, which is referred to as a hydrosol, which a lot of people use as a facial toner. So now essential oils. Now has been an industry leader with essential oils for over 30 years now. We have an ongoing commitment of providing only high quality essential oil products and we're always making continual improvements, especially as you can see in our labels. Here you see the transformation of our essential oil labeling throughout the years. We started making the most recent orange label 30 years ago and then we started our current one, which is on the far right in 2010. We have R&D chemists in the chemistry of essential oil and Lou, who deals with the majority of our essential oil testing is with us today. So I'm going to let him take over this portion in regards to our quality. Uh, thank you, Tina. Um, we have a in-house testing uh, that requires a approval of at least 70% or we won't release uh, the material. We also have processes for qualifying ingredient vendors. Uh, if we find anything that has adulterants, we will not use those vendors or their products. Uh, any new products or samples go through rigorous testing uh, in-house. And another note, we never do any animal testing. We are completely cruelty-free as a company. Uh, what you won't find in our products are, are mi microbial pathogens, harmful pesticides. We don't allow radiation, uh, synthetic chemicals, uh, or vegetable oils. Or do we allow the oils to be contaminated with other natural oils, which is a common practice? Uh, uh, purity and ath authenticity are two key characteristics of a quality of essential oil. Uh, the null quality control procedure ensures that all of our essential oils meet our rigorous quality standards. Our reputation is built upon providing top quality essential oils at the most reasonable price. Uh, our quality team does multiple tests on each of our essential oils. Uh, the first test is a sensory evaluation. Uh, this is comprised of physically inspecting the essential oils for consistency, Color, clarity, color, and aroma. We have 10 people in-house that uh, routinely uh, do this, uh, this type of testing. Analytical tests act as a signature or identity test and are uh, species specific. Uh, each species has an acceptable range of natural variations of its constituents. Uh, we use the GC uh, uh, gas chromatography MS uh, standard test uh, in flavor fragrance business where volatile components are separated uh, when combined with the carrier gas and the peaks are read out to look for variations to identify synthetics analyzed by the computer. Uh, the fingerprint, as it's called, allows the chemist to positively verify the oil's identity. Uh, this is where the components are ID'd and quantified. Uh, we also use refractive index. Uh, each oil has a range uh, a refractive index. When light uh, hits a liquid surface, its speed changes and bends the light, measures and compares speed and wavelength at, at which light passes through the sample. Um, additional tests to confirm our specific gravity, which compares the density of material to a reference sample for the purpose of verifying its identity. 
uh, heavy metals uh, when we are qualifying vendors, particularly organics and cold press, they require heavy metal and micro testing as well. Uh, active chemical components of major and marker components, uh, gas chromatography, uh, mass spectrometry uh, uh, compounds get separated out. Uh, this can identify synthetics and adulterants that have been added. Uh, synthetics, foreign essential oils, and fixed oils as well are, are um, analyzed for. Uh, all suppliers of our essential oils are required to perform optical rotation to ensure each batch meets our set of uh, optical criteria. Uh, to determine the rotation of polarized light through a liquid to establish, it, to establish its optical activity, the degree of rotation and its direction are important as a criteria of purity. And this is a, a, a pretty specific test for essential oils. Now, this is just to show the equipment and readings of some equipment uh, used in the testing, the FTIR, which is infrared spectro spectrometry on the left, and the GC gas chromatography uh, on the right. You can pull up purity spec sheets for our essential oils on our website. Uh, these are typical analysis examples showing our GC infrared uh, spectrum tests and other supporting information, uh, but, but these, these are not uh, a lot specific. Um, on this slide, we have three gas chromatography tests performed on eucalyptus oils from the U.S. and two other competitors from us and the, uh, two other competitors in the market. In hindsight, all of the charts look extremely similar, considering they are all eucalyptus globulus species. Here we see each uh, as overlapped. If you were to compare signature, your own signature on a piece of paper, if you sign your name four or five times and place one on top of the other, it will be slightly different, although each is the same signature. This difference doesn't mean that one is more pure than the other. It just happens with variations in nature. Even when using the same extraction technique, time after time, there may be slight variations noticed in different batches of oil. Uh, each species allowed this range, which has to do with the time of year harvested, the weather conditions, location grown, the soil, maturity of crops, and so forth. I'm now going to show you guys a short video of my time in France last year visiting with some of the farmers and suppliers of our lavender essential oils. We created this video to show all of the steps required from seed to bottle. The soil is very sandy and a little bit rocky and it's a, a relatively arid climate and it really is an area that just seems to be perfect for growing lavender. It's important to, to partner with people who understand lavender, who understand how to, to grow it, how to prep the soil, uh, who understand how to take care of it. I mean, that's, that's really important knowledge that we want to see passed down. So a lot of the farms are uh, multi-generational farms where you've got grandparents, parents, and children sometimes working the land together been in their families, you know, six, seven generations, some of the farmers that we deal with. We certainly want to see them be able to make a, a comfortable living so that there's incentive for the next generation to, to get involved in the family business and continue to, to provide high quality product and, and for it to be sustainable. The distillation process is, is relatively simple. They, they take the, the cut lavender flowers and they load them into a, a large stainless steel vessel you drive steam through it and then you condense it later what comes out the other side are all of the, the constituents of the, the plant the volatile oils that you're looking for that have that characteristic smell of lavender and um, the beneficial properties of lavender the quality of essential oils at Now Foods goes beyond our vendor qualification program and the careful selection of uh, our materials. We uh, employ multiple instrumental analytical techniques to make sure that we give our customers the purest, highest quality oil uh, we can offer them. It's really the same process that we use for um, all of the materials that we source and all of the essential oils that we source. So making sure that we can trace our materials back to the source, you know where they came from, who they came from, how they were produced. We believe that natural is better and there are some processes that we don't want used to make our products. We want to make sure that there are no synthetic ingredients 
that are um, spiked in. You know, in certain instances, to give it that really powerful smell, people will take synthetic components and they'll spike them in. We want to provide the distilled plant in its natural form, so we, we're not allowing any of those synthetic constituents to be used. We know our lavender comes straight from the field, and there's nothing else added in. You know, it's, it's like anything else. What you get at the end is really a result of all that goes into it on the front end. Okay, back to me. Producing high quality essential oils for aromatherapy, as you can see, requires knowledge, skill, experience, and dedication at each step of the process. From growing and harvesting to fine tuning the extraction process times, temperatures, and pressures. So a little more information on our essential oils specifically. We offer a wide variety of essential oils as well as skincare oils, all derived and sourced from nature. Currently, we offer 88 varieties of essential oils, and for the top sellers, we have varying sizes as well, of 2 ounce, 4 ounce, and 16 ounce. Each 30 ml bottle contains approximately 600 drops of oil. So in our process, we have 17 organic oils currently. Um, this is just showing a small portion of the organic oils that were photographed in the past. Um, you will notice the difference in the green color variation and the USDA organic symbol on these labels. And then on the right is a photo of what we call our fun blends. We currently have 12 in our line with Peaceful Sleep, Cheer Up Buttercup, Clear the Air, and Nature Shield being the current front runners for best sellers. We also have 11 other blends and absolutes. Um, these are our pure oils that are blended with jojoba oil to create a better price point. So we have a pure frankincense, but we also have a frankincense blend as well. And these are great when used for topical use as well. Trust is such a key issue for consumers. It is important to feel confident in what you're buying when you read a label. We have two third-party certifications that we use in our aromatherapy line. The first one is the non-GMO project verified seal which is assurance that the now product bearing that seal has been verified as a non-GMO by an independent third-party organization. The non-GMO project works at every level of the supply chain to ensure viable non-GMO choices for consumers. So all of our essential oils and carrier oils will carry this logo. We also have USDA organic seal. NOW's organic products and ingredients are certified organic by Quality Assurance International, which is QAI. Um, this is one of the leading USDA accredited organic product certifying agencies in the country. So as I said in the past slide, we're all non-GMO project verified on all of our essential oils. We have a toxicologist on staff who's reviewing the safety of all aspects of essential oil usage. This is why our warnings might be more extensive than those of other brands. We advise people to consult a professional as we are limited on what we can say legally. Aromatherapy products are regulated by the FTC and must conform to labeling regulations. We label all of our products in compliance with regulations in order to protect the end user. Our oils are double the size of most of our competitors while also being affordable. So our end result is we strive to always offer the highest quality essential oils at the lowest cost for our consumers. Our philosophy as a company is to pass the savings on to customers. We have over 1,500 products as a company. So we buy in bulk and we pass on the savings to our customers and we don't take excessive products. As our owner said, you shouldn't ask why we're so affordable. You should ask why everyone else is so much more expensive. The typical markup in the HBA industry is 100 to 300% and markup on perfumes is even higher. So consumers are paying more for the packaging than the actual product inside. And we choose not to follow this model. So this is just a little bit of the past year, the 2019 spins data. Now is the number one overall brand in the essential oil category. We have 19 of the top 25 items, including the number one item. The number one item is peppermint. And then we have tea tree, lemon, rosemary, clove, and bergamot oils. We're a top seller of all essential oils, one fluid ounce size and larger. Now is the dominant number one overall brand in the body and massage oil category. We have 11 of the top 25 items, including the number one item. We're the number one seller overall in the category. The number one seller overall in this category is our sweet almond oil. We also have top sellers for shea butter, vegetable glycerin, jojoba, grapeseed, argon, avocado, and apricot oils. And in regards to diffusers, 
In the natural industry, we're also the number one diffuser brand. We have seven of the top 10 sellers for all diffusers in the market. Essential oils can also be added to your favorite personal care products like shampoos, conditioners, or creams. So this is showing the different essential oil uses. One is for inhalation, one is for diffusion, you can use them in the bath, you can use them for massage, you can use them for cleaning, and you can also use them for beauty, as I said, with um, shampoos, conditioners, or creams. The most common use topically is through massage, which has three distinct benefits, touch, smell, and absorption. Very few essential oils should be applied to the skin at full strength because they are highly concentrated and can irritate skin. Most require dilution with a carrier oil, and some should not be used on the skin at all. So always practice caution and do your research before using oils. Another note is to make sure you are storing your essential oils and blends in a glass container away from sunlight and heat. Um, and if stored properly, most essential oils should be shelf stable for two to three years. This is a slide of our ultrasonic diffusers. There are several ways, as I said, to use essential oils. The most popular is that of diffusion. Diffusion provides continuous distribution of the oil scent, which makes it easy to smell without topical application. Each of our now diffusers has the same qualities. Cool steam, no heat, BPA free, automatic shutoff, and a one year guarantee. Using high frequencies, these units separate the essential oils into small particles, producing a micro mist that is circulated into the atmosphere of your favorite room. Negative ions are released that give you a sense of well being while mood is uplifted. The mist stays in the room environment for many hours and helps to humidify the air you inhale. So this is a great benefit in drier climates or when heat sources operate in the wintertime drying out the air. Air conditioning also dries the inside environment, removing the ambient moisture from the air surrounding you as well. So this can also be used in the summer. The most important thing to remember about 100% pure essential oils is that they are powerful and highly concentrated and should always be used in small amounts with caution and care. Anyone who is new to aromatherapy should seek a professional reference or expert in the field before using them for purposes other than aromatherapy. Most essential oils should never be used around infants as safety data is either non-existent or negative, and they must always be used with care around children and pets. Very few essential oils should be applied to the skin at full strength because they are highly concentrated. Most require dilution and some should never be used on the skin at all. Always practice caution and do your research. Use of essential oils around pets require extra caution. Now does not recommend that concentrated essential oils be intentionally given to an animal for ingestion or applied topically unless directed for a specific condition under direction of veterinarian. While essential oils are generally suitable for diffusion around pets, these oils can affect different animal species in different ways. Caution is always advised when diffusing in the presence of a pet. So here's a couple simple steps to help minimize your pet's reaction to essential oil exposure. And you can also find this on the internet on our website as well. Always ensure diffusers are used in an open, well-ventilated area of the home. If diffusing for the first time around a pet, always carefully monitor your pet for the first several minutes to see how they react to the scent. If they show any signs of discomfort, cease diffusion immediately and air out the area by opening up windows and doors. Ensure that your pet has free access to other areas of your home if a diffused aroma becomes too strong for them. Never leave a running diffuser and a pet un unattended. Diffusion should only be done when you, are, you or another person are present. Keep your essential oils in a secure place where no children or animals can reach the undiluted product. So you have to be extremely cautious around cats. Cats metabolize substances very differently from other animals and are unable to efficiently break down and eliminate certain chemicals and metabolites from their bodies. Chemicals in the environment that would not be a problem for people or even dogs or other animals have the potential to be very toxic to cats. Cats are fastidious groomers, so make sure they don't come into direct contact with a diffused liquid. So if it's in the air with the condensation and they're coming up on the furniture, just be very cautious because they tend to lift their coat and they can ingest it. Just like adults, children can also benefit from aromatherapy through use in a diffuser or properly diluted topical application. However, caution should always be used since essential oils naturally are heavily concentrated. So we're going to keep repeating this throughout the entire 
webinar. Children may have unknown allergies that will make, make use of certain essential oils off limits for them. So even essential oils that may be deemed generally safe for children of their age, you can also exercise caution when introducing children to essential oils. When in doubt, get it approved by a licensed practitioner before using. Also note that some essential oils can make the skin more sensitive in the sun, um, phototoxic oils, and should not be used outdoors. So to the left are a few essential oils that are generally safe for children to use in diffusers or topically in the proper dilution. Um, on our website, um, at, on the knowledge FAQs regarding use of essential oil for children, you can find the entire list, but this is just a couple that we had. Um, and then to the right are now essential oils that should not be used for specific age groups. So some reminders, always ensure diffusers are used in an open, well-ventilated area. If diffusing an oil for the first time, carefully monitor your child, just like your pet, um, for the first several minutes to see how they react to the scent. If they show signs of discomfort, cease diffusing immediately, immediately and air it out. Just like with pets, never leave a running diffuser and a child unattended. Um, they can take it and spill it or take any bottles. They can consume them. So always be careful and always watch your children around essential oils. Essential, essential oils are an everyday therapy aromatherapy therapy. pleasure, so they can also be used in bath. Um, this is a great self-care practice. Um, as is the nature of essential oils, we have to make sure to dilute them into a dispersible spa-like application when putting in the bathtub. So using essential oils directly in bath water will result in them sitting on top of the water, which will likely cause irritation. It'll stick to your skin. And if it's not diluted, you could go out into the sun. If you have bergamot oil, you could burn your skin. So there's a lot of different cautions. For those with extremely sensitive skin, it may be advised to simply diffuse the essential oils in the bathroom while in the bath instead of putting them directly in the water. So always start with a small amount if you're sensitive, and then you can always work your way up. Before adding essential oils to the bath, make sure to efficiently disperse them in either a vegetable oil or a foaming product to effectively emulsify them. Carrier oils like fractionated coconut and jojoba oil are a great place to start. In general, you can add about 9 to 12 drops of the recommended essential oil mixed into a tablespoon of carrier oil. We have a dilution chart on our website as well. Um, you can input any amount and it'll tell you exactly what amount of essential oils to put in that amount of carrier oil. We do not recommend mixing essential oils directly with bath salts as many prepackaged mixes have not been pre-tested to ensure dilution ratios. So mixing essential oils first with the carrier oil and then into the bath with the bath salts is the proper way to go. So a great way to do this is to put them in with our magnesium bath salts. Okay, so now we're going to address some commonly asked questions. So I'm gonna put this over to Lou. One of the biggest questions we get are, are now oils able to be used internally? Okay, um, this slide uh, lists uh, nine oils that should never be taken internally. There's a number of reasons why. Uh, it can uh, involve uh, tissue damage, uh, cause asphyxia, as well as digestive issues. Um, the International Federation of Aromatherapists does not recommend essential oils to be taken internally unless under the supervision of a medical doctor who's also qualified in clinical aromatherapy. Remember, our oils are designed for aromatherapy and not for ingestion. Our oils are pure, but they're not all from food sources. And so regardless of brand or quality, I would just say uh, you should really avoid taking not only these, but, but any uh, oil internally. These oils are highly concentrated. They are chemicals um, extracted from plants and the toxicity varies with each oils. And when they're taken orally, these risks of uh, toxicity uh, increase. And so before you do this, you should always uh, reference a professional, like I said, a medical doctor who's qualified in, in clinical aromatherapy on the next slide are, are essential oils that can qualify as grass or generally recognized as safe. Uh, many of these are taken from, from edible plants, and uh, the um, FCC and the FDA do consider these as GRAS or grass. That doesn't mean that you can take these internally. Okay, let me qualify that. Uh, so 
again, again consult. consult. Uh, uh, you know, you might say, okay, let's take, for example, orange oil. Uh, that might seem really sick. I eat oranges every day. Well, the amount of oil in an orange peel is only like maybe a, a few tenths of a percent. Here you're talking about if you take one ml, that's one gram of oil, and you put that on your skin or you put that in your mouth, uh, you're going to start having issues with mu mucous membranes, and then you're going to be going to the doctor, and then you're going to be having all kinds of problems. So um, uh, again, just because it's from a food source doesn't mean that it's safe for you to just arbitrarily use. I will add at this point about uh, the concept of dilution. Even if you're just using it, let's say for topical use, I want to stress dilution. You need to dilute these oils in an appropriate carrier before applying them. Okay, one of my favorite topics, therapeutic grade. This has been around for a long time. There are a number of, of our competitors who claim that it's uh, th uh, that must be therapeutic grade, or they'll have grades, you know, A, B, C, D, and that sort of thing. But let's just confine this to therapeutic grade. This is a misleading claim. Uh, there are no uh, monographs that indicate that any essential oil is therapeutic grade. Okay, um, there are no current f federal facilities uh, uh, that that provide documentation to prove this claim. There are no monographs. Uh, anywhere. Uh, they're not listed in any of the uh, pharmacopoeias as being pharmaceutical grade. One of the experts in the area of aromatherapy is Tisserand, Robert Tisserand, and his take on essential oils is that this, this question of grade as well as therapeutic is irrelevant. It's, uh, the only thing that's relevant with an essential oil is that it's from a rep reputable botanical source that it's extracted correctly, uh, but re reputable botanical source means the correct genus species and chemotype, okay? So if a person identifies the genus, the species, and the chemotype, that it's extracted correctly and has the right aroma profile and has the correct chemical profile to give the optimum benefit, that is a good oil. That's all that's required. All right, and then this is just to show a topical application dilution chart. Um, we have this up on our site. It's a, and we also have a very handy calculator that our marketing team created to calculate the drops based on bottle size and desired dilution percent. Pure essential oils, as we keep stressing, are about 70 times more concentrated than the whole plant. So compared to adults, essential oils should typically be used in half the dosage rate for children for topical application and always should spot test and follow label warnings for everyone. For adults, 2.5% dilution is typically recommended for most purposes in recipes. For children under the age of 12, use 1% dilution ratio max. 2.5% uh, blend for a one ounce bottle of carrier oils is typically around 15 drops of essential oils. So for all of those without handy internet use, we also created this marketing piece with a pre-made dilution chart for easy access and instructions on it as well. So you can order these in tear, tear pads for all your stores as well. And then on the opposite side is a skincare oil chart, which we'll see on the next slide, but defining carrier oils, oils produced from the fatty portion of a plant, such as nuts, seeds, or kernels. So all contain different profiles of fatty acids. Each has unique properties and provides sources of vitamins and essential fatty acids needed to keep skin and hair hydrated and healthy. So this was originally termed carrier due to their ability to carry essential oils topically to the skin. Um, otherwise, they're also known as base or fixed oils. So there's multiple uses for carrier oils. They can be used as basic skincare moisturizers. They can be used for specific con skin conditions one might have or they can be used with essential oils in massage or bath oils, as we previously had said. So this is the skincare oil chart that is on the other side of the dilution chart. This is showing each carrier oil um, and which preference and skin type. Um, so natural oils rich in oleic acid are typically recommended for dry skin. Linoleic acid oils are recommended to help balance oil production and prevent pore clogging for oily skin types. 
So carrier oils, they're a great way to enjoy the benefits of essential oils topically. So this is a great resource for picking which carrier oils dependent on your skin type. It also shows the extraction method and botanical name. And for any of those you, of you who don't already know, each carrier oil that we have is also in a UV protected clear bottle. So it has highly dispersed UV inhibitor system designed for use in the PET. So with the carrier oils, um, we have over 30 years as an industry leader in these as well. We currently have 16 carrier oils, seven USDA organic, nine conventional and pure, and five massage oil blends. These also come in varying sizes. We have a one fluid ounce of our jojoba. And then for the conventional, we typically have a four ounce size and a 16 ounce size. And then for the 32 ounce size, we also have the vegetable glycerin and the almond oil. All of our organic carrier oils will come in an eight ounce or four ounce size. And all of these are hexane free as well. So this is a list of our pure skincare carrier oils. So these are our conventional oils and this is the varying sizes. And then on this page is our certified organic skincare and carrier oils. So we're recently expanding to try to include organics for each of them as well. This is our topical treatments. So this is specifically for facial care typically. Um, we have our organic rose hip seed oil. We also carry this in a conventional. Um, we have our organic argon oil and our organic tamanu oil. And these work great in conjunction with essential oils and other carrier oils. You can do your own facial oils. You can create your own hair oils, body oils, you name it. So this is our website for our knowledge articles. So if you have any questions or looking for FAQs or specifically are looking for more knowledge about one product in specific, this is where you go to. We also have safety data sheets for each of our essential oils and carrier oils. And you can find these under the quality and safety. We also have many articles based on our quality and safety of all of our oils and carrier oils as well. This is where you can find a ton of essential oil recipes. I'm gonna be working in the next year on adding more recipes to our website. And then this is just showing some magazine articles where we've been featured. Our social media platform, we have a Now Foods Official for Instagram, at Now Foods Official. And it's also Now Foods Official for our Facebook accounts as well. And this is just showing stories. We recently had a beauty influencer event where we did a bunch of DIY recipes, had a complete spa day where we're using all of our products to create our own DIY, DIY at home products. We also have a product information team. So if you have any technical questions outside of what we already have on our website, you can feel free to call the number or email, or you can email me directly as well but our team is very knowledgeable on every single product in our company. And now we're gonna go over aromatherapy new items before we wrap it up. So I'm very excited about these. This is our most recent release and it's our essential oil roll-ons. This makes essential oils easy to take and use on the go. We have our new organic roll-on blends. We currently have tea tree, eucalyptus, lavender. Peppermint will be ready by the end of the month. And then we also have currently head relief blend as well. And then we're gonna be including three new blends before the end of the year. So these are simple roll-on application. The blends of essential oils with organic jojoba are perfect for safe topical application. We have a 95% organic jojoba and then 5% essential oil in each one. These are all non-GMO project verified, vegan, and all the pure tea tree, eucalyptus, lavender, peppermint, those will be USDA organic. The blends will not be but they do have the 95% organic cohoba. This is our newest ultrasonic diffuser, the ceramic stone. Um, each ceramic top is handcrafted just like our glass diffusers. It also has three timer settings and runs up 14 hours. This is a great design piece to any home while also getting your therapeutic benefits from essential oils. You can also use it as a humidifier in your place. This is one of my favorite new diffusers as well. It's a cute sleepy puppy diffuser. Um, it has three projection templates for your child's ceiling along with built-in music tracks 
of different sounds of nature. They have birds chirping, rainforest, um, ocean waves. It's a great way to put your child to sleep along with our peaceful sleep diffuser blend. And then even if you're not using essential oils, just to diffuse as a humidifier water into the air while they watch the stars and moons on the ceiling as they go to bed. We just came out with gift cases this past year. We have our essential gift case and also our holiday cheer gift case. So this has a little mini diffuser which doesn't use water. Um, you just put the essential oils directly onto the gl little glass cup and then it diffuses that way. So our essential gift case has our Smiles for Miles oil, rosemary, lavender, and lime. And then our holiday cheer gift case has the nutmeg, clove, candy cane, and Christmas tree blend. Our newest essential oils that came out are organic geranium oil in a one ounce size. So this is the bourbon type of geranium. It's steam distilled from aerial parts, purifying, soothing, and normalizing. We also have our organic Atlas Cedar. So this is organic Cedrus Atlantica oil. It's steam distilled from wood. It's very grounding, centering, and balancing. Our organic Patchouli, as you can see, um, we've been making a big push towards getting more organic oils into our line. Um, this is our Pogos, how do you say it, Lou? Pogos de Mon Cablin. Okay, <laughs> and this, this is steam distilled as well. It's very grounding, balancing, and calming. Our organic cinnamon cassia. Um, this is warm and spicy, stimulating, refreshing. And then this is a couple of our new products coming soon. So as I said before, we have some new essential oil roll-on blends coming. Our organic peppermint should be here by February. And then we're also gonna have our mental focus blend, peaceful sleep blend, and a nature shield roll-on blend. Um, we're also coming out with a blue tansy in jojoba oil. Um, a vetiver essential oil, a turmeric essential oil, a cardamom, and then we're also doing two fall essential oil blends, which you guys should be seeing pretty soon and get excited for. Um, our Christmas tree and our candy cane blend. Um, we renamed the Christmas tree blend to Woodland Walk. So these will both be in the one fluid ounce size. Um, they're going to be released in the fall of this year. And this way, the Woodland Walk we can sell year round as well. And that is the end of our presentation. So we just want to say thank you for sticking around and listening. Please be sure to check out our website for any additional information, for any FAQs, for more information on our quality. Feel free to join our Facebook and Instagram accounts. We love new people coming in and interacting with us. We love the engagement. Um, we also have a YouTube account if you guys want to see more videos similar to our lavender video that I showed. And now we're going to take a few questions. Okay, so let's start with the first question that we received. And someone asked, how are now oils so much more inexpensive than competitors? We take a very great pride in making our aromatherapy oils affordable to all. We purchase our oils in large quantities that qualify for bulk discounts, which we then pass on to the consumers in the form of everyday low pricing. So we price our essential oils just like supplements or personal care items, not like perfumes, which typically have huge markups. Um, we mostly sell direct as retailers, as using distributors typically adds on 30% or more to suggested retail prices. And we also do not have multiple levels of marketers that like MLM to pay commissions to. So we don't have to inflate our prices to cover those additional costs. Okay, excellent. And I know that's a question uh, we hear quite often, but thank you for that answer. Uh, next question, are now essential oils watered down or diluted in any way? I'm gonna uh, let Lou field this one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um... Uh, both our pure conventional and certified organic essential oils are never diluted or watered down in any way. However, we do offer a variety of essential oil blends, some of which are combined with the jojoba oil. Okay. Why would you use the jojoba? Uh, generally, uh, uh, these are done with oils that are uh, very expensive. Uh, okay. For instance, uh, ja jasmine absolute, uh, rose, rose absolute, um, hilly chrysum. Uh, the, these are oils that are extremely expensive, uh, so we sell these as, as dilutions, and we uh, uh, label them as such. 
Okay. And we'll have the percentage okay. on each label as well, showing exactly what the percentage difference will be. Right. Okay. So just another way that now keeps the cost down so you can still get the oil in, in a blend. Yes. As an example, we have a pure frankincense oil, um, and we also have a frankincense with jojoba oil, which a lot of people use in making DIY products. So it's great if they're using them directly in their skincare with the jojoba oil, so it's like a lower concentration. Oh, which, yeah, that makes sense, too, because we are uh, taught to dilute our oils anyway, so it's already diluted. So. Yes. Okay, very interesting. Good question. Good question. Okay, um, next question. Does now manufacture its oils from raw ingredients or purchase their oils? Um, now has uh, great partnerships with uh, key suppliers that grow and harvest the raw ingredients, which then get processed into the oils we package and sell. Additionally, um, now does formulate, process, and package um, all of our own essential oil blends in house, the blends that we uh, mentioned uh, earlier. Okay, very good. And that uh, also goes in regards to our pure blends too. So we call them our fun blends. So this is our peace and harmony, our peaceful sleep. Those are all formulated in house. Um, we're also just released some new roll on blends. We currently have four organic roll on blends and one. Um, we call it the head relief blend. And then we're currently working on formulating three more before the end of the year that will have different types of aspects like for focus, for sleep, and the third one I believe was for protection, for support, immune support. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, I love the blends personally. I love them because I don't like to wear the perfumes because they give me a headache. So I wear essential oils and everywhere I go, people are like, oh, what are you wearing? <laughs> the new perfume. All Lou and Siraj. Okay. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, next question. How does now source ingredients and what are your relationships along the supply chain? So we have a network of key suppliers um, they, that grow, harvest, and process the oils. We work closely with them to understand how our supply might be affected due to any weather-related conditions and scarcity of materials. Um, we build strong business relationships with these key suppliers, including visiting their locations and meeting their farmers. Um, as I had shown earlier in the webinar, we just recently visited our French farms where they grow the lavender. In many cases, the key suppliers we work with are family-owned companies, um, just like now, which is great for us. So having these solid relationships with the supplier is always key to having a sustainable supply of oils that meet our quality specifications. Yeah, that's awesome. That is really awesome. But now does all the, the testing for all the oils. That's correct. We're looking primarily, first of all, that the chemical profile meet our, meet our specifications. And then we look for synthetic uh, chemicals that may have been added or sometimes either deliberately or uh, there are times when it's, it's a uh, contamination. This can happen as well if the supplier is not mindful of keeping to their SLPs and keeping their equipment clean. Well, it's good to know that uh, that now does all that testing so we can ensure that our, that our oils are pure and safe and, and uh, are what they say they are, so. Okay, let's move on here. Um, here's a question we get often. Um, does now test for pesticides? Um, where it makes sense, uh, yes, we do. Uh, many botanicals um, uh, used for essential oil production are very aromatic to begin with, and they tend to naturally repel insects, so pesticides are not used or needed. Also, a number of these uh, botanicals are actually wildcrafted. For instance, your frankincense and myrrh, uh, and some of your uh, other grass types, such as citronella, are actually grow wild and are harvested uh, uh, by the farmers at the edge of their fields. So there's no need to add anything to them because these things are actually wild and grow proliferously. In addition, um, these plants are actually priced for their purity. So the pesticides are really, uh, if used, are kept to, uh, kept to a minimum. Um, since very few pesticides possess the characteristics of, of an essential oil pesticide are found in distilled oils are typically insignificant, but we do test for them regardless. In one large database, for instance, 
uh, where over 73,000 analytical results on the distilled oils were uh, presented, less than 1% t tested for any detectable uh, pesticides. Where you will generally find pesticides are in the cold pressed oils, which are the citrus oils. Uh, these are all cultivated. Farmers don't like to have low yields. So we do test those. Also the organic. Now the organic certified should not have any pesticides. So these definitely are tested. Uh, and we have had examples where certified organic oil samples were sent in and we found pesticide res residues and we had all or some very interesting um, excuses as to how they got there. <laughs> Let me just say that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Um, just a couple more here. Um, are now essential oils cruelty free? Yes, they are. So our essential oils are vegan. We don't utilize animal testing on any of our products or ingredients. And we recently just got certified um, by PETA, the cruelty free certification as well. Excellent. Um, why does now carry a synthetic jasmine fragrance? Well, a pure natural jasmine fragrance oil is extremely difficult to source and extremely expensive, which translates to an exorbitant retail pricing. Um, this is due to the requirements to produce uh, the fr uh, fragrance for jasmine in the first place. Uh, the, the synthetic jasmine fragrance is much less expensive and its aroma is equivalent to that as pure jasmine, which is why we offer it as an option to our customers. Uh, the jasmine absolute is blended with a hobo oil and is one of our blends. And we offer that as a natural alternative for those who prefer not to use a synthetic fragrance. And also to note here, um, for the synthetic jasmine fragrance, we do not note that this is an essential oil. It is listed under now solutions and not under now essential oils. Okay, another good thing to know. Um, and looks like we have one more question. Uh, what is an absolute essential oil and what is the extraction process for that? Okay, um, absolute essential oils are similar to their pure distilled and cold pressed counterparts. Uh, but for various reasons, the extraction process is more involved and requires the use of chemical solvents that are later removed in the production process. Uh, we do offer two absolutes, the rose and jasmine, which are produced by using the solvents hexane and ethanol in a specific sequence. Um, after the extraction is complete, uh, these solvents are uh, reclaimed and removed by a stripping uh, process that leaves the essential oil portion intact. Uh, essentially what it is, is the hexane will remove um, the essential oil along with the plant waxes. And then once the hexane is removed, that what's called a concrete is then extracted with ethanol to remove the essential oil from the waxes, leaving the waxes behind. Then the ethanol is removed, giving you what's called an absolute. Um, we only offer these two absolute oils due to the rarity and high cost of taming this theme distilled rose and jasmine absolute oils, uh, oils, and it would be many times the price of these absolute uh, versions. Okay, I understand now why you have to be a chemist to <laughs> to do this because uh, there's a lot more to it than just the the aroma in the bottles that we love. So. Um, that is all the questions that we received, and um, I thank you very much for um, being with us, Tina and Lou, for an excellent presentation and to answer some questions that we received from our audience. So um, thank you very much, and thank you retailers for joining us. We'll see you next month.